What's going on everybody? It's Conti here with another video. How to change the speed of a clip in DaVinci Resolve 16. In order to insert your video clip file to your media pool, go to File, Import File and Import Media. Left click on the video file inside your media pool now which you have inserted. Drag this down to your timeline. Let go of the left mouse button once your video clip is in place. This is an example 5 second video clip which I will be using in this tutorial. If I right click on my video clip and go to clip attribute, I can see what the frame rate will be of my video clip in this tutorial. This particular video will play at 24 frames per second. A frame contains a single visual still of your video file. Click OK. The clip preview you just saw was the video clip playing at a normal 100% speed across a full 5 seconds where the dog comes in from the outside at the beginning and rests by the camera at the end of the video by 5 seconds. How would I increase the speed of this video clip first for example? Right click on the video clip on your timeline and choose change clip speed. In order to increase the speed of your video either the speed or frames per second can be incremented to achieve this effect. I'm going to do this via the frames per second first of all as an example by doubling the frame rates from 24 to 48. Double left click and enter your new frame rate. Note how when I left click back on the speed in the box above this number automatically updates to match the frames per second below. The updated duration is also displayed in the final box. Pitch correction can be ticked or unticked for this particular example and maintain timing is selected also. Click change and now here is the updated video clip. What if we increase the speed further or want to modify the speed of the clip in a different way? Right click on the edited clip once more and go back to change clip speed. I'm going to increase the speed to 500% this time by modifying the data in the speed box at the top here. Click change. Now as you can see the edit on the timeline has shrunk. When I use my red indicator we can see that this is because the clip now only lasts one second. If I preview this new video clip now you can see that the entire content from the original 5 second video clip plays within a 1 second duration. Hence why the size of the edit is smaller here. Press Ctrl and Z to undo any changes. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you're a Mac user. What if we wanted to slow the clip down? If I right click and go to change clip speed I want to cut the speed down by half and will therefore change the speed here from 100% to 50%. And as you can see the duration has doubled from 5 to 10 seconds. If I keep maintain timing selected and choose change, we can see on the timeline here that despite a 10 second duration being added to the video, the clip that we see on our timeline is only 5 seconds long. In order to fix this problem, we can do this manually by going to the selection mode by left clicking on the arrow icon or pressing A on our keyboard. If I zoom out on my timeline and left click at the end of your edit, hold the mouse button down and drag to the end of the white rectangular outlines that you can see appearing on your timeline now, which represent the full length of your original video clip. And surely enough if I drag my red indicator to the far side of my video clip at the 10 second duration you can see the last frame of the dog on the carpet with the whole video clip now running half the speed. Going back now to my original edit it is also possible to make DaVinci Resolve expand the edit itself if you were to slow down the speed of the clip rather than you having to stretch it out manually using the selection tool. If you right click and go to change clip speed, once you have reduced the speed, left click in the box next to ripple sequence. 
ensure that maintain timing is still selected and click change and now you can see on your timeline the whole edit lasts for 10 seconds having been doubled from its initial five second duration and using my red indicator i can see that the final frame with the dog lying on the ground appears at the very end of this edit at the 10 second point what if there were other clips on my timeline which i wish to adapt should i make any changes to the speed of my first edit here so for example if i make the first edit slower and therefore smaller how could the second clip move to the left also or if i made the first clip longer how would the second clip also adapt and shift along the timeline i'm going to return to my original dog clip here right click and go to change clip speed what i'm going to do first of all is increase the speed to 200 percent my intention is for the edits of the dog clip on my timeline to be halved with the mountains clip moving to the left also. If I first change the speed to 200% and left click on ripple sequence, keep maintain timing selected and press change. Now you can see that the mountains clip has automatically moved to the left since the dog clip has been halved in size. What if you wanted other clips to remain where they are though? If I go back to my original dog clip and go back to the change clip speed settings, this time when I change the speed to 200%, I am going to untick ripple sequence. Maintain timing is selected. I will click change. And now the size of the dog edit has been altered whilst the mountains edit remains in its original position. Going back to just having my original dog clip now, I'm going to return to change clip speed. What if we use negative numbers in the speed or frames per second? You can add the minus symbol manually by double left clicking in either the frames or speed box and changing these yourself. Alternatively, just left click in the reverse speed box and the numbers should invert by themselves. Again, keep maintaining timing selected and click change. Since I kept the original number 100, the size of the edit remains the same. However, as you can see with my red indicator at the start of my clip, what shows is the frame from the original ending of my video clip. And if I preview this video, you can see that the visual sequences have been reversed. The greater the negative value for speed and frames per second, the faster the reversed sequence will be, as you can see in this preview where the clip runs twice as fast in reverse. What you can also use the change speed settings for is to take one particular section of your edit, such as this frame here with the dog about to enter, and show this frame throughout the remainder of your edit on your timeline here. If I keep my red indicator here just after the first second and right click and go to change clip speed once more, Without altering the speed of the clip itself, I'm going to left click in the freeze frame icon. Note how the speed and frames per second can't be modified now. Maintain timing remains selected. I go to change and the edit has been divided into two. You can tell that the edit to the right contains the new freeze frame setting as it is darker than the edit to the left of the red indicator on our timeline. And if I preview this, you can see that the freeze frame with the dog just before the doorway is displayed throughout the rest of this particular edit all the way to the five second mark at the end going back to just having my original dog clip now what i am now going to do is add a transform effect to this clip and show how speed editing can affect this with my red indicator at the beginning of my clip i'm going to go to my inspector window under video where zoom displays one in both x and y under transform i'm going to left click in the diamond once to the right of these numbers to create a keyframe i am now going to left click and drag my red indicator across my timeline to the two second mark the first number to the right here on your timeline represents the frame number you are on where your red indicator is based so we are on the 18th frame for example here after the first second of your video project here 
you can also use your keyboard to go to a particular part of your timeline. I can go right by holding K and pressing L on my keyboard. Or I can go left by still holding K and pressing J. Now that I have arrived at the two second mark, I'm going to left click on the diamond next to zoom again. And this time decrease the X and Y values to 0.5. If I change it in one box, it should update in the other as long as the link icon appears lit up between both, like so. And what I have now is a video clip where the size of the picture decreases by half after two seconds have played. And will display with a 50% size throughout the remainder of this edit. So at the start of my edited video with the keyframes, the first keyframe where zoom X and Y is 1 appears at the 0 second mark where the whole video appears in full size. And if we go forward to the 2 second mark, we can find the second keyframe where the size of the image is reduced to 0.5. And the rest of the video plays with this 50% size. Please note what appears on my video preview before my next demonstration. At the zero second mark, we can see an image of the garden. And at the two second mark, we see an image with a blue screen and a pillow where the second keyframe is allocated. What I'm gonna show you now is how keyframes are affected once you change the speed of the clip that they have been added to. If I right click and go to change clip speed, I have doubled the speed of my original dog clip by changing the speed from 100 to 200%. Maintain timing has been selected. If I click change, looking at the modified clip on my DaVinci Resolve timeline, we can see that the first keyframe under inspector where zoom X and Y is one has remained in the same position as it was in the video clip before a speed modification was applied. However, if I drag my red indicator to the two second mark, we can see that the second keyframe where zoom X and Y was 0.5 has now been allocated to an image of the dog lying on the carpet, which appeared towards the end of the original video and not to the image of the blue screen and the pillow, which we saw in the original video, which ran for five seconds. This is because the maintain timing setting ensures that the keyframes remain in the same timing locations on a video clip. So in the original video, the first keyframe appeared at the zero second and the second keyframe at two second mark. And this will be maintained each time you have maintain timing selected. What if we wanted the keyframes to stay with their original images when a speed modification is applied? So for example here, how can we ensure that the second keyframe sticks with the image of the pillow and the blue screen? If I right click on the clip once more and go to change clip speed, this time after doubling the speed from 100 to 200%, I'm now going to select stretch to fit instead of maintain timing. If I click change, when previewing my modified clip on the timeline now, what you can see is that the keyframes have now been shifted to the opposite end of the video clip. The second keyframe which I inserted in my original dog clip has now been moved to just over one second before the end of the video edit. And the keyframe where the image was at full size has now been moved to the end. So how are we able to fix this problem and invert the positions of the keyframes so that they are placed at the correct points of your video content? What I need to do is remind myself how many frames per second this particular video clip plays for. If I right click on the original clip in my media pool and go to clip attributes, I can see at the top underneath video, as we saw at the start of this tutorial, that the video frame rate lasts for 24 frames per second. This particular video runs for two seconds and 12 frames, which is 60 frames altogether. In the original dog clip, the duration was five seconds. The second keyframe where the size of the image reduces by 50% appears at the two second mark. Two is 40% of five. 
there are 60 frames altogether in this edited clip here where the speed is doubled. 40% of 60 is 24 and therefore the second keyframe where the image size reduces by 50% should appear at the 1 second mark instead of the 1 second 13 frame mark. So how can we move this keyframe back to an earlier point of my video edit? Along with the original keyframe which has been moved from the beginning to the end of my video edit. Using the selection mode tool, left click on the diamond icon which appears on the blue section of your video edit. If you cannot see any white diamond shapes which appear underneath the clip name itself, use your zoom tool to help you. The first diamond to the right on the blue edit here represents the keyframe where zoom X and Y is 1. And if I drag my red indicator to the second diamond on my timeline, we can see that the diamond shape represents the keyframe where zoom X and Y is 0.5. As a reminder, this particular keyframe should be positioned at the 1 second mark, which is 40% of the way through this video. If I left click and drag my red indicator to the left, I've now located the position where this keyframe needs to be moved to. If I use my mouse with the selection mode again once more, left click on the keyframe and drag this to the left so it is parallel with my indicator. I can now see on my preview window that the keyframe appears at its original position where there was a pillow and a blue screen. And if I repeat the same process with the other keyframe by dragging it back to the beginning, using my red indicator, I can see that the start of the video now plays with a full size. Left click on the diamond icon again in your blue edit to close the transform window when you are done. Sounds in your audio tracks will also be affected should you change the speed. In order to ensure that the sound remains similar to its original state, you can left click in the pitch correction box here inside change clip speed. If I double the speed of the clip and untick pitch correction, and select maintain timing for example. Once I click change and press play. <laughs> Note how the audio speeds up also and doesn't sound realistic. If I undo with control and Z and go back to change clip speed once more, this time I'm going to double the speed and make sure that pitch correction is ticked along with maintain timing. Click change. Oh, here comes. Oh, here comes. <laughs> Get up, Bobby. And note how the sounds sound realistic and similar to that of a video clip playing at normal speed. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about more in future, please like and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.